Now, let's talk risk management. There are many different risk strategies. Too many. The point is you need a risk strategy. Okay? Now, a risk strategy is very personalized. It depends on your style. It depends on your objectives. It depends on what you want for yourself. Okay? It depends on you know, a number of different things. What market you trade. The point is you need a risk strategy. Now, I'm going to take you through two. And I'm going to take you through the most simple ones for a good reason. These were the first two I was taught. And more importantly, these are the two easiest to implement. And most importantly, these are the two easiest to be consistent with. Okay, if, I can, if there's one thing I can hope to achieve today, it's I hope everyone listening to this walks away and just develops a risk strategy for themselves. Because the number of problems this will solve for you, from emotion, to blowing out accounts, to becoming consistent, to learning, to surviving. Risk management will almost guarantee that you can survive for long enough to figure this game out. It is the one thing, unfortunately, that no one talks about, no one teaches, yet it's probably more important than anything else. Remember that pyramid we spoke about of development? Everyone wants a strategy at the top of the pyramid. No one wants foundation, which is risk strategy. Why? Because oh, risk management is so boring. Okay. Don't forget our objective is to make money. And unfortunately, making money can be boring. Right? Stop thinking of the sexy days where million pound days and all that. That's not trading. That's the outliers. Okay? The foundations is where we have to develop as traders. Now, the first strategy we're going to deal with is equal risk weighting. And the name says exactly what it is. We equally risk based on the number of trades we do on a daily basis. How it works. If you do an average number of trades of 7.3, now again, I'll go through suitability in a moment. We'll come back to that questionnaire so you can understand how that questionnaire relates to you developing a risk strategy. How the strategy works. Work up the number of average trades you do on a daily basis. Okay, for example, 7.3. Now, if you are a very active trader, use a fast moving average. Okay, if you're a, 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 an investor or a swing trader, perhaps you do an average of five to ten trades a week, use a slow moving average. Okay, why? Well, if you're very active and one day you do seven, the next day you do 15, the next day you do two, and the next day you do 20, the reality is you need a moving average to keep up and adjust with your level of activity. Okay, so use a moving average. For example, if you're a day trader, I'd recommend using a 10 day moving average of how active you are. How many trades do you do on a basis? Okay, 10 day moving average. Now, we'll talk about determining your daily stop in a minute. Let's assume you have a thousand dollar daily stop that you allow yourself. Okay? You ultimately just take that one thousand dollar daily stop, okay? you divide it by a denominator. Now that denominator, I prefer to be very conservative, okay? because typically you're always going to trade more than you think. But also, I believe risk management should always be conservative because what's our objective? What's the, what's the number one objective about all, uh, above all else in trading is to survive. Okay, so always be conservative when it comes to risk management. So we simply just take our thousand dollars, we round up our average to eight, we add on one because we want a double layer of conservative, and we just say one thousand dollars divided by nine means that I risk one hundred and ten dollars per trade. It is the most simplistic strategy around. Okay? I know obviously some people use a fixed dollar allocation, even more simplistic. The reality is, guys, it's not a complicated strategy that makes it successful. It's the application on a consistent basis that makes it acceptable. The problem is, we'll do this Monday to Friday. You will. You'll go out of here, you'll quickly put this in Excel, you'll work out your average trade, you'll come in, okay, cool, I'm risking 110 per trade, you'll apply it Monday to Friday, and the following week, suddenly, you'll have $250 on a trade. Why? Oh, because it feels good. Oh, man. Trader Brand on Twitter said it's going to break out, and I followed it, and yeah, I felt good because I'm making money, and suddenly, you have $250. You break the protocol. You break the consistency of it. And then, all of a sudden, what will happen is you'll start to do well. It'll start to work for you. And you'll feel like, well, actually, I, I like this idea of not having to stress about how much to risk. Like, I don't have to think. I just come in and it says 110. I know 110 in the oil market equals this amount of lots. I put it on. And it's awesome. I don't feel the emotion. I don't feel scared of it. And then all of a sudden you start to tweak. And you're like, well, let me try and change it so I can maybe risk a little bit more. Let me try and adjust it so I can... 
and all of a sudden you start to lose that consistency. Okay, a risk management strategy is exactly that. You implement it, you leave it for a couple of months, you see what it does in terms of eradicating emotion, you see what it does in terms of making everything a whole lot easier. You see how it gets rid of that chimp thinking when you're taking on risk. Let the value in the strategy apply itself and then by all means when you've solved this foundational issue of risk management, then start to get cute, then get clever, then, you know, for me now, I'm somewhere at the top of this pyramid where I'm trying to compete. Okay, so I can't use an equal risk weighted anymore. I need to now be a little bit more specific. I need to know when to use leverage. Okay, so I've got a combination. I, I use something called a fractional ERW where I take winnings from my day and I'm reinvesting that. In other words, I'm allowing myself to leverage with my winnings. I like the whole Druck and Miller idea of when you're up, push the edge. I like that. And I use those winnings to leverage. Okay, so I'm developing a slightly different edge. The point is I'm still consistent in applying it. It's just I'm on a different level to where other traders are. I've got a risk protocol in place. Okay, so start simple. When you see the value of it, when you've got the foundations, when you're consistent, by all means, become cute and become clever. Now, I speak about dynamic adjustments, very important. You don't want to be dealing with this on a daily basis. Okay, so make sure that you do account for things like volatility. If you're someone that does two trades, and then you do 20 trades, and then you do 50, and then you do three, you need to adjust for that. Conservatively, always conservatively. Okay, and daily stop size is a percentage of your account balance. Make sure that this is adjusting automatically to your account balance. And I'm going to show you in a moment um, how to grow an account. Okay, one of, the, one of the biggest topics, again, no one talks about. There's a very easy way to grow an account, and I'll show you how to do it in a minute. And I wish someone told me this on day one. Okay, what are the advantages to this strategy? It's very simple. <laughs> it's basic math. Okay, it is very simple. Uh, it's a very consistent methodology. It's not biased. Okay, there's no subjective probabilities here. You're not thinking, oh, this trade's better than this one. So there's no discretion involved. It is what it is. You just take $110, you divide it by your stop, and you implement the trade. It's just non-discretionary, simplistic. Okay, and it's very, very powerful to learn basic effective risk management. So it's very good for younger traders. Okay, this is the first strategy I adopted. Very, very good for younger traders. Now the disadvantage, okay, you won't maximize on your profit potential. OPEC comes out, gets rid of Iran. Okay, well, sorry man. $110, that's the rule. Okay, so you are going to miss out on leverage opportunities. There are drawbacks to every strategy at the end of the day. The point is, don't change the strategy. Recognize the drawbacks, but recognize more importantly that the advantages always outstrip the disadvantages. Okay, you lose the power within effective leveraging. Slow account progression, but... Uh, well, not but, and you need a very high tick win rate to get that account growing. Uh, and ultimately, you have to make sure that you keep a very close track on an average trades. Okay, if you are someone that's quite volatile, the reality is you might trade yourself out of the game sometimes where, oh, I've done my 10 trades today, and this is an abnormal day where I'm very active and I don't have any risk left. Okay, so that is a factor that unfortunately does impact the strategy. Okay. Let's go on to the next strategy, and this was actually, this is a conversation I had with Mike Bellafor back in, I think it was 2015, we were actually in London, yeah, we had a breakfast together, and we were talking about this idea of implementing risk and how the strategies, how they do it at, um, uh, at SMB, and my, what Mike was saying to me was this idea of when you have a good idea, go for it, okay, put more risk on, take the additional leverage because you have that good idea, and so he came up with this idea of like the ABC and what he would say is your absolute best trades where you feel like you've got conviction and the stars line up and the confluence is there, okay, you want to put on more risk than the trades that there's less conviction and maybe you're just trying to feel your way around in the market. And he came up with this idea of ABC and what you do is you effectively create three buckets, okay, you list your trades from your best to worst and your best trades you assign more risk and your worst trades you assign less risk. Okay, so the way to think about it is your absolute best trades that are 75, 85, 95% likely to win, you want to allocate 50% of your daily stop. Okay, and your worst trades, your gamble trades, your feely trades, I want to fill the market out, you only allocate 10% of your stop. Right? And that's suddenly what your daily risk looks like. 
Now, why I know this strategy is extremely potent and why it is extremely effective is because the biggest trader when I started trading actually adopted a very simplistic form of this. And I remember I went to him one day, I said, how do you manage risk? He says, very simple. When I feel good about the trade, I put two times the clip. And when I just feel like it's a normal trade, I put one times the clip. And I was like, really? So and he would say, yeah, if it feels right, I put 500 lots on. If it feels not right, I put 250 lots on. And that was his approach to managing risk. And this was a millionaire trader. The point is, is that he never changed that approach. Okay, as his account size grew, he'd go from his trades that he, on normal trades, would be 300 lots. And then if it was a great trade, it would be 600 lots. And as the account grew, that's how he adjusted. It was always double or single. Two clips, one clip. Okay, it's the simplicity of a risk strategy that makes it effective. The problem as traders is that we jump around a lot. And trust me, when it comes to risk management, this has probably been my single biggest problem my entire career. It's just not allowing the markets, not allowing the nature of the market, not allowing the excitable mind, not allowing the monkey brain to hijack and say, oh, Brian, this is it. This is that moment. This is the 2008 crash where you, know, you can put on as much size as you like and this is your road to riches. Okay. I am sucked into those moments continuously, which is why me, more than most, needs a risk management model. Okay. Because I have to be able to control that emotional brain. Because in the long run, this is what safeguards you. This is what gets that account growing. This is what allows you to survive for enough years to figure out what works to then go for those outlier trades. Okay. It is risk management. Now, the advantages to the ABC is you can take advantage of high probability outcomes. Okay, you start to use leverage. You apply more risk to the best trades. It's a very dynamic approach. Okay? You can take on more ideas and learn with engagements. And this is why I included, rather than just having an A and a B, I like the idea of having an A and a B. Okay? So your A's are your, like that really big trader, is your double clip. Your B is the single clip. And your C is the gamble trade. Why? Because you have to be gambling as traders. Every day you've got to be gambling. Every day you've got to come and try something. Piece it together. Okay, well, this feels like it's working, this open drive idea. I like it. I want to try it out. But try it out with risk that's irrelevant. Okay, if you're risking 10% of your day on a tryout trade, it's not going to impact you. But if you're risking 50% on your something you don't understand, that is going to impact you. Okay, and that's where the A, the B, the C comes in. Use the C for your gamble trades. Use the B as your normal trades. Use the, C, the A as your, this is it. This is the one. Okay, the mistake I see with a lot of young traders, okay, is unfortunately their A trades are even more than their daily stop. Okay, so sometimes traders will expose themselves. If they have a thousand dollar stop on the day, they will expose themselves effectively with a clip to more than a thousand dollars a day. And that makes no sense. How do I know? Because in 2015 December, I had a 40 lot in the euro dollar. Okay. And it sounds great, it sounds sexy, it's wonderful when it works, trust me, it's great to make easy money. But that time that it doesn't work, that time you get caught out, you're going to come back to this and you go, you know what, all those years where I applied risk ineffectively, I got caught out. Now I need to go and do it properly. Okay? Don't be sucked into it. Uh, ah, one of the big risks, okay? It does require advanced understanding. So this strategy is better suited towards traders that actually understand their game. They know what their best trades are. Okay, they've got a little bit of edge in some strategies. Uh, it does require a little bit of back testing. Okay, because you need to know what the high probability plays are, what aren't the high probability plays. Uh, there is a risk of foregoing trade opportunities if insufficient risk. In other words, if you've come in on the day and you've taken two trades that are A trades, your risk is gone because you only got potentially two A trades in the day. Okay. Uh, and by the way, an A trade doesn't have to be 50%. A B trade doesn't have to be 25 and a C trade doesn't have to be 10. You adjust those based on your personality style, what you're trying to achieve. Okay. And lastly, the subjective nature. An A trade, to me, feels, you know, I feel confident, I feel good, this feels like an A. There's a subjective approach to that. Okay. So there are, again, disadvantages and advantages to every risk strategy. The important thing is to consistently apply it. Okay. Coming back to this. ABC or ERW, which one do you think you're more suited towards? Uh, and that's the purpose of this questionnaire, is the questionnaire ultimately tells you what you're more suited. If you're a beginner and you're slightly risk averse, you're going to be better suited towards ERW. 
Okay. If your annual return expectations are 25% or above, guess what? You're going to need an ABC. Because to do a 25% return on an ERW is a little bit more difficult. Okay. What is your account size? Well, again, if you're using 50,000 or above, you definitely want to be using ABC as opposed to ERW. How many profitable backtester strategies? Well, if you haven't got a backtester strategy, or one maybe, you don't want to be touching ABC. It's not the right time for you. Right, so the point of this questionnaire is that it ultimately guides which risk strategy is more suitable. Not better. There is no thing, such a thing as a better risk strategy. It's more suitable. Okay? Like I said, I use a fractional ERW, which is exactly like an ERW, except what it does is it reinvests my profit. If I'm up $1,000 in the day, that $1,000 is utilized to leverage onto the upcoming positions. Okay, it's a slightly more dynamic risk strategy, but in order to do that, well, guess what? I have a very, very aggressive return expectation. By the way, in terms of return expectations, as a day trader, and again, it's something, unfortunately, not a lot of people want to talk about. If you're doing this as a career job, don't be afraid to have return expectations of 100%. It's very possible. It's very doable. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're trading with a $10 million account, it becomes more difficult, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But if you're trading with a $5,000, $10,000 account, 100% okay, returns in a year is very, very possible. It's very doable. In fact, go on this floor, and I can guarantee you every one of the traders on this floor has done it in a year. Guaranteed. And I'm talking about the top floor. They've all done 100% return in a year. Okay? So keep that in mind in terms of risk management. Now, how do you determine a daily stop? Remember that thing I told you in the beginning about rule of thumbs and avoid the rule of thumbs? The best way to determine your daily stop is what's, what's your reason? And that's why I got you to write this down in the beginning. Why are you trading? If you told me, Brannigan, I'm trading because I want to be rich and I want to be a millionaire, well, the reality is your daily stop is going to be very different to if you told me, I just want to make my rent and pay my mortgage. They're two very different daily stops. Okay? What are your current trading objectives? If you want to make 100% return a year, unfortunately, you're not going to get away with using a daily stop of half a percent of your account. It just doesn't work that way. It's got to be relative. It's got to be proportional. If you want to make 100% return a year, you probably need to be risking 5% of your account. Okay? So it all aligns. Your objectives ultimately determine your stop. Coming back to the whole discussion about knowing your business, can you start to see why it's so important to number one, what is my purpose? Why am I doing this? Number two, what are my trading objectives? Not, oh, what's the next strategy I can develop with candlesticks? That's not relevant in the foundational development. In, the, rel in the, the foundations, we need to be able to determine how much to risk on a daily basis, and that depends on objectives and ultimately what our North Star is. Okay? In terms of conservative, I like this rule, and I don't want to use the word rule of thumb because I said avoid rule of thumbs, but I like to think of it and frame it in this way. If you're an aggressive trader, you like to take risk. You want to double up and you want to go for that sort of get rich approach. You are going to need to allow yourself what I like to think of as 25 trades, 25 big blinds. Okay? Because the reality is to get rich quick, you have to take a different degree of risk. Which means if you give yourself 25 trades, you really need to make sure that you've got some form of consistency so you don't blow yourself up. Now again, some people might say, oh, that doesn't make any sense because... 25 trades is not enough, and yeah, you're not wrong, but it depends on your objective. Because if you want to make 100% return, well, guess what? You need a much more aggressive risk profile. If you're more conservative, if you're a younger trader, beginner trader, allow yourself at least 100 trades. Never, ever, ever use more than 1% of your account on a day. Okay? And when I say 1% of your account on a day, I'm talking about a day trader. If you're an investor, never use more than 1% per investment. Because guess what? The markets are 50-50. If you think about it on a very baseline level, we can only buy and sell. It can only go up and down, which means, technically speaking, it is a 50-50. And again, no one talks about this, but it, it literally is you could, you could like flip a coin, and if it lands on heads, you buy it. And, and the reality is it's a 50-50 chance of going up and down. The problem is we take the odds, and by impl imposing ourselves on the market, we suddenly start to put the odds against us. Okay, that's ultimately what makes trading difficult is ourselves and the approach we take to trading. Okay, so very, very important. Conservative traders, don't ever use more than 1% of your account. In the beginning of your career, it's fine. Remember the objective. 
It's not to be better than the guy next to you. It's not to make a bigger up there than the guy next to you. It's to survive for long enough to figure it out for yourself. That's your objective. Right? And later on in your career, as you want to get more aggressive, as you want to try and make those big returns and grow as a trader, fine, get aggressive, but do it at the right time. Okay. So as a rule of thumb, by the way, just so that's clear, 1%, maximum 5%, somewhere in between there, determine your risk profile on a daily basis. Now, why do we need risk management strategy? Because first and foremost, you've got to survive. I showed you that equity curve in the beginning. You're not going to make money in your first year. If you do, you've probably gotten lucky and there's going to be a number of lessons that you're going to be forced to learn at some point in your career. Now, lucky doesn't mean that you, know, you can't accumulate sufficient wealth to get you over that line, but the reality is in your first year, you probably haven't learned enough to make enough good decisions so that you will continue being profitable in the long run. That's the way to look at it. Okay? So when you have a risk management strategy, you're guaranteed to survive. Like Mr. Consistent in year 8, 9, and 10, who's now a millionaire trader, he was guaranteed to survive until such a point he figured it out for himself. Number two, you can be objective. Now remember what I said to you in terms of the decision-making protocol. You don't want to be thinking about risk when you're putting risk on. The moment that signal goes off and says, buy me, there is no thought process. Oh, the risk model says buy three, buy three. Don't think, don't allow the monkey brain to hijack. You, project, you protect your progression. Okay, and this is crucial, particularly for young traders. This is something I struggled a lot with. That three steps forward, four steps back. Right? When I started with risk management, I distinctly remember a day. I'll never forget it. Uh, Mario, who's the risk manager at Axia, I was uh, clipping 10 lots in the oil, particularly over the oil inventory data. And I went to him this day and I said, Mario, look, for the last couple of weeks, this oil number has been blipping down and fading straight away. Can I have some more limits? And he said, okay, well, how many do you want? And I was on a good run. So I said, can I have 40? And he was like, oh, but much. I was like, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm not going to use them all. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, sure. 10 in, another 10, another 10, another 10. And it just kept going down. Um, the point is, is that, God, I wish I didn't have that 40 lot. Okay, because the result of that was, I remember I went to North Greenwich that night and I was just saying to my wife, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I just... That's so stupid, it makes no sense. I mean, all of you are laughing because it doesn't make any sense. It is stupid. And yet we all do it, all of us. And had I had that protocol in place, okay, fine, there's nothing wrong with 15 lots. Fine, take the risk, of course. Add on additional leverage, but 10 to 40 is very different to 10 to 15. Okay, eliminate emotion. Coming back to the example, what do you think happened when I went 10 and I went another 10? Oh, suddenly this is unfamiliar territory. This is 20 lots now, the P&L is bee-bop, bee -bop. Oh God, now it's got another 40 ticks in very quick succession. Who's in charge now? Not the computer brain. Oh, brilliant. What happens if you have your worst ever day? What happens if you have a moment like that ECB 2014 in the market just... What happens if it goes to zero? Okay, we all saw that moment where oil went to... Oh no, wait, it went negative, okay? What happens if it does that? So suddenly the monkey brain starts safeguarding, saying, well, maybe it drops $10 in quick, maybe you send your account, maybe your career's done. Okay, none of that needs to happen. You can eliminate emotion. This is why I said to you, if you want to be fearless, if you want to be not afraid of losing, just have a risk strategy in place. You'll never be afraid of losing what you understand. Okay, and that's the key to risk management. And then lastly, consistency. If you want to develop consistency, start with a risk management. Start with your risk management, implement a consistent approach, and I guarantee what will happen is you're not going to necessarily start doing that in terms of equity, but what I guarantee you're not going to do is that. Okay, so you will become consistent because your line will start to look a little bit more like that. And yes, I know it's boring. Trust me, that is boring. It sucks. But at some point you do that for long enough and it goes like that. That's trading.